Hello, this is Samuel from Action Figure Fury, and today I'll be reviewing the NECA Cult Classics Bubba Hotep set. Uh, these two figures came out in two separate ways, one after the other in the classic line of NECA Cult Classics, which was one of the uh, early lines of figures they did before they, you know, expanded into doing aliens, predators, and such forth and so forth. This is their uh, one of their first early lines, and is one of my personal favourite lines that NECA have ever done. I had a lot of figures on my um, you know, wish list, these two being prime up there, among a few others, which I may review down the line if these prove popular. Anyway, you can see here I've got Bubba Hotep. It's really, really cool and he's really desiccated and <laughs> it's really, really grisly and horrible. Uh, of course, I've got here Sebastian Half, who believes himself to be Elvis, of course, played by the man himself, Bruce Campbell. Looks absolutely fantastic looking figures. They do look absolutely ace. These are two of my personal favourite figures in my collection. As you can see here, they both come with diorama bases, which are really, really nice. Here's um, Bubba Hotep's base. It's a, a swamp base. This is from their final battle in the film. As you can see here, uh, he has a little license plate from the truck from the bus that crashes, where uh, our friend Bubba ends up in the swamp and gets reanimated and comes alive and starts uh, terrorizing the residents of an old folks' home. You can see here, he's also got some reeds, which is really, really nice as well. Really, really cool. I do love the cowboy outfit, of course, uh, to blend in. Um, Bubba is wearing some <laughs> Western clothes because obviously it's in Texas. Uh, I should mention uh, the film is directed by Don Cascarelli, also directed the uh, Phantasm films, and is written by Joe Lansdale, who is a very, very popular uh, noir and horror writer. Most of his books are set in Texas. So this is obviously said. This is why he's wearing a uh, cowboy out, wearing a cowboy outfit. As you can see here, uh, Bubba's wearing some awesome, awesome, awesome snakeskin cowboy boots. I do dig these a lot. Look at the detail now. You can see this on the sides here. They've got some nice de fine line detail. Goes all around the other side of the boots as well. If you can see there, look at that. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, it's really, really nice. He's wearing somewhat looks like to be the, re uh, the rest of some jeans, which have really like fallen apart. And you can see the uh, his wraps beneath there looks really, really well done. The detail on these is no second to none. Of course, he's also got a, a great belt buckle with a, a head there. Scotland looks really nice. Of course, the belt on the belt, one of the belts is going over one of his hips to probably just keep his pants up. Really well done. Neck have done a fantastic. Uh, job with this and of course we come up to the chest where he's got the remains of a really really bad looking cowboy shirt with his uh, desiccated corpse with his chest sunk in with his rib cage exposed there looks really really cool and the sleeves are all torn up showing the rats beneath and on the back here we can see a bit of the homage to to jason voice from part seven with the uh, spine and some of the back column there exposed the back bones exposed really really cool as we come to the face it looks really, really grizzly. You can see some of the, the bone exposed here, just at the chin. And you can see how there he's got the cowboy hat itself is not removable, so you can't get that off. Um, looks really, really nice. The eyes are sunk in. Looks really, really nice. And they've got this really, really raggedy hair. The hat looks pretty cool as well. Cowboy hat. Well, there's little, loads of fine details there on the hat. Looks really, really nice. Really well done. And of course, he has uh, two. Um, little feathers there in the hat as well which is really really cool i do love western figures and we don't get enough of them so i'm really happy with this set even though it's not strictly, strictly western he's wearing western clothes it looks really really nice uh in the ways of articulation bubba has a ball uh swivel is there a ball joint yeah it's a slight ball joint in the head you can't get much motion out of it um i'm afraid because some really nice old necker figures they has a swivel in the uh shoulders a swivel at the elbow and swivel at the wrists uh, nothing, of course, at the waist, because obviously you know, these are old necker figures and they're more static. And he has uh, swivels in the boots, which is all the articulation you need for Bubba. And he has two peg holes on the base and on his feet, which sticks into the base. Looks really, really nice. Really happy with these figures. And, of course, we're coming to the Pierre de Resistance of the collection, which is my personal favourite figure, is the figure of Sebastian Half, a.k.a. Elvis. This looks really, really nice. I do dig this one a lot. As you can see, uh, Sebastian Half comes on a similar base to, uh, to Bowen from the Swamp uh, Final Battle of the film. It's really, really nice. You see some grass and dirt and some rocks there. But I really do dig uh, Necker bases. It's a shame I don't do them anymore, but I do love what, what they've released. There's really some truly fantastic looking bases, and some of these are even better than this one. As you can see, uh, Sebastian Half actually comes with some accessories, unlike uh, Bubba here. He comes with his uh, little bag of mojo, 
As you can see on the chest here, looks really, really cool. Hangs from his chest, it's on a little string, hangs nicely, looks really well detailed as well. Bang up job. Then also he comes with his Zimmer frame, as now uh, uh, Sebastian, well, Elvis in his much elder years from the old folks' home, requires a Zimmer frame to get around. It looks really, really cool. You can see some of the detail. I've just mentioned, I stuck a bit of blue tack here just for the purpose of the review, because my, when I got out of packaging, it snapped. But then, if I did remove the blue tack, it wouldn't uh, really affect it. You can still line it up. It looks pretty darn good. I have no real faults with the Zimmer frame. It's always well detailed. You can see the frame come together and little handles up here and everything else and the little wheels. They don't move, of course. It's a static piece, but it looks really, really effective. Uh, Sebastian's, of course, wearing a, a very much an Elvis Spur Vegas inspired outfit, which is covered in detail. You can see all the little stud works there. Some of them really do shine. It's it's absolutely incredible and well done. I do dig the belt as well and these little chains that come hanging down the side. Look really, really good. Of course, Elvis is wearing a lot of rings. Really well detailed the hands. Really, really nice. Really impressive. Even on this hand, he's got a few rings on. Of course, he's got a nice little uh, decorative cape, which I do dig. Uh, a lot looks really, really nice as well. Nice, good sculpt to it. Good paint, very good paint. But there's very minimalist paint. You don't need too much too paint, too much paint with this. I do love the collar as well. Very much, very, very uh, 1970s inspired Elvis look. Really, really nice. The head sculpt is my favourite, especially the shades. I really do dig those. I'm not too sure if they've sculpted any eyes beneath there. It's not really important that it is because most of the time Bruce Campbell is wearing sunglasses as Elvis Presley. So. Uh, well, Sebastian Half, a.k.a. Elvis, so it looks really, really nice. I do dig the wavy look to the hair as well. The mutton chop sideburns look ace as well. The grizzled look, you know, the makeup to make Bruce Campbell look older than he actually was. He was only about in his early 40s when he did this film, but they made him look really old, and the makeup conveys well across the figure as well. It looks really, really cool. You can even see some teeth in there as well. Really, really nice. I do dig this figure a hell of a lot. The, he is a bit more articulated than our uh, the, the mummy. He has a uh, bullet jointed head, so you can get him looking down, looking across like that. And you can get some motion out of there. He's got a swivel. Is that a ball? No, it's a swivel. No, swivel. That's a ball joint. A ball joint in this one. Swivel in this one. No swivels at the elbows. Swivels in the wrists. Nothing at the waist. And there's uh, some uh, articulation in the ankles. Just swivels. So he has a little bit more articulation than our friend the mummy. Of course, how you meant to display these two, because from the final battle, very much like the Freddy vs. Jason set or the Bride vs. I forgot the other character's name from the Kill Bill set they did, it's meant to be positioned something like this, which looks really, really nice. I've, I've had this piece for a number of years. It's one of my favourite pieces from my collection, from one of my favourite films. It just looks ace on display like this. I do highly, highly recommend it. Of course, these figures do fetch a hefty price in the secondary market, especially here in the UK where I got them. I had to pay quite a pretty penny to, for these, especially for the Sebastian Half, which was the hardest figure to get. But I'm very, very happy to have this collection. If you're a fan of Bruce Campbell or Bubba Hotep, this set is a must-have if you can find it. I doubt we'll ever get any more figures from the film again, but I really do dig this set. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review, and... Bye for now.